Okay, this is uh, tape two of Mr. Millen's oral history. And uh, Mr. Millen, when we were just finishing up, you were talking about you had actually had some basic flying time where you learned and went up for the first time in Carlisle, Scotland. And you got about 10 hours of flight time and it actually soloed. Yeah. And the decision was sort of made that you are you were sharp enough to be able to stick with flying yeah. So uh, as a pilot. And then at that point, you were then uh, shipped across the United States and wound up in uh, training up to Canada and uh, you were in um, uh, Prince Albert, Saskatchewan yeah. and uh, that's where you received more flight training, is that correct? Yeah. What, what kind of planes were you flying in? T Tiger Moths. And, and what was your training experience like there? Um. Very much like the early stuff in England, mm -hmm. the, except the Canadian tiger moth had an enclosed cockpit because of the cold weather. Was uh, were you flying on your own, or were you flying with an instructor? Instructor. And what kinds of things were they teaching you? Um, uh, let's see. You're learning some some more specifics about flight dynamics and and emergency procedures. Mm -hmm. What to do if you have no if the engine fails and you're going to make an emergency landing. They taught you all how to how to do that, right? Yeah. Tell. How, how long was that training in uh, Prince Albert? How long did that take again? Do you remember? Couple of months. Maybe. Couple of months. And we're thinking now in our in terms of the time frame. This is probably early 1942, because or the spring of 42, because you had actually um, uh, the United States, you believe, had already come into the war at that point. Yeah. Okay. Now you're training there and you're in an enclosed cockpit and in the Tiger Moth and then after that training what happened what happened next? You were this is still in uh Prince Albert, correct? Yeah, then I went to Saskatoon. How far is Saskatoon from Prince Albert? It's due south and uh I don't know. Okay. And what happened at Saskatoon? I learned to fly a twin engine. What kind of plane was it that you learned to fly on? Uh, Cessna crane. Could you spell that Cessna, the, 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 the model? C-E-S-S-N-A. Mm -hmm. C-R-A-N-E. C-R-A-N-E. Yeah. Oh, crane. Got it. Cessna crane. And it's a twin engine? Were you with an instructor at the time? Yes. Was the instructor a military or a civilian? Civi civilian. My, my civilian instructor at um, Prince Albert was a, a missionary. He used to... mm -hmm. What are your days like in, at Saskatoon? What do you want? What are your days like? What time do you have to get up? Six o'clock. Do you have to be in um, like a military formation? Do you have to have uh, line up and then go for breakfast? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What What are your quarters like? Uh, we We had two tier bunks, rows of them, and uh, we had a. a It was very cold in Saskatoon. It was very cold. It was, uh, was it wooden, wooden huts? Yeah. What kind of heat did they have for you? Uh, we had a, a coal fire. And you'd say this was uh, probably 1942, early 1942? Well, it must have been because I remember it, it, we, the temperature one night hit 54 below zero. 
Were you able to fly during the day in that cold weather? Yeah, we did. What's it like to fly in, in very cold weather? Um, we have to wear, we had to wear a couple of flying suits and two, two pairs of gloves and a helmet and, um, mm -hmm. the, uh, plane, the cabin was heated, but, um, It was cold outside. Let me ask you a question. Did did you? Why were you flying twin engine planes? Because I, I was earmarked to be a bomber pilot. When did you find out you were going to be a bomber pilot? I wasn't told, but I was figured that must be what was earmarked for me. Okay. Uh, um, how long did this training take in Saskatoon? On the twin end? About three months. About three months. And did you have classroom instruction? Yes. What kinds of things were you learning in flying the twin engine Cessna crane? What kinds of instruction were you getting? What to do if one engine fails. Uh, that type of thing. We did night flying too. We'd also done night flying at Prince Albert. Can you describe for us what a night flying exercise is like? Um, it's scary as hell when you start out. And, uh, Do you remember if you had a fly to like a beacon or a radio, radio site, or, or were you having visual flight when you were flying? Did you have a, a, a point that you went to in night flying? No, we... Uh, I don't understand your question. We were learning to fly at night. We do circuits and bumps. Circuits and bumps. What is a circuit and a bump? Take off. Come in and land. And why is it scary? Because um, when you're flying at night, um, you uh, you can't. You have no visual contact with anything. That's what's scary. And. Um, You know, the, the, he should have been to be with me a few years ago. It's so long ago. Oh, that's okay. No, you're you're telling me. I I understand. Now, tell me a little bit about after you learned in this twin engine uh, Cessna crane, and you're flying. You're doing night flying, and you're learning how to operate a twin engine plane. After about three months, what happens then? Then you got your wings. And what's that experience like to get your wings? Well, it's very exciting because I, uh, I wanted to do this more than anything else in the world. How did you know that you got your wings? What, what test did you have to pass finally to get your wings? They, they, well, I got my wings and I got my commission too. Mm -hmm. And I had a bunch of exams to take mm -hmm. on navigation, and you had to learn all about um, mm -hmm. Navigation, and you had to learn about the various. Oh, you had to know all about the airplane, the fuel system, uh -huh. the hydraulic system, air 
aerodynamics, all of that stuff. Now, once you got your wings, how did you receive your wings? Was it a ceremony? They, yeah, they had a ceremony and they called out your name and marched out in the cell, pinned them up on your... Uh, on you there? <coughs> the lapel there? What, what was your rank at that time? I was a, a, a leading aircraftsman. Leading aircraftsman? Yeah. Aircraftman? And for the Royal Air Force. Yeah. When you received your, and did the others receive their wings at the same time at the ceremony? No, uh, some of them. Uh, flunked out and didn't get anything. Okay. They they'd be shipped off to another school to learn, learn about. After you got your wings there, and that that did that take place in Saskatoon? Yeah. Then what happened? Um, then I, I also got my commission to, I, I was now a pilot officer. That's the lowest mm -hmm. commissioned rank. Where were you sent after you were commissioned as a pilot officer? I had two weeks leave. Mm -hmm. And I then I had to go to Charlottetown. Prince Edward Island. What did you do on your two weeks leave, do you recall? Yeah, I went to Hamilton, Ontario, met these girls that I'd been given the addresses of. In Hamilton, Ontario. Okay. After the leave in Hamilton, Ontario, you reported to Charlottetown and Prince Edward Island. And what, what was it, Charlottetown? That, that was where we did advanced navigation. And how long did that course take, do you remember? About eight weeks. And what did you learn during those eight, week, eight weeks? Um, How to navigate over the sea without having any visual contact mm -hmm. with land. Mm -hmm. Now, when you did that, were you with a trainer pilot? Uh, well, you attended classrooms. You attended classrooms? But then you did it on your own. You flew on your own. And when you flew, were, were you doing any formation flying at that time? No. It's just on your own. And give me an example. No, I wasn't even flying. Yeah. I, sat, I, I flew as a navigator. Oh, you flew as a navigator. Yeah. So you learned to navigate. So there was a pilot, an experienced pilot, flying a plane. Yeah. And you'd be we we the responsibility of how to navigate him out in the in the ocean, ocean area. Yeah. And what kind of plane were you flying when you were with the pilot? That was an old Avro Anson. In S O N. And was that a two-person plane that you were on? Was it a pilot and navigator? Was it a bigger plane? It. Uh, it was a big, much bigger than the Cessna Crane. Okay. Flying out over there. So that, that took about eight weeks. How how did things go with that? I did extremely well. Um, I understand that I I got ninety eight percent in my in astro navigation and. Uh, Now, when you're when you're there at Charlottetown and Prince Edward Island, and you have the eight weeks of the navigation training, you successfully complete that. Now, what are, where are you staying at, in in when you're learning to do this? What 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 is what's the physical structure of the buildings you're in? Uh, typical Canadian Air Force. Canadian Air Force. Okay. Wooden huts. Bunk beds. Yeah. 
same kind of a same kind of a setup. Okay. After you learn to navigate, then what happens uh, at the end of that time frame? At the end of that eight weeks. Then, then we went to the Bert. To where? To Bert. D E B E R T. What? Where is the Bert? Nova Scotia. And what's going to happen at the Bert? That was where I got my crew. I I got a navigator, a navigator bomb member, and uh, um, I got my two air gunner. Mm -hmm. So now I had a full full, full complement crew. Now, did you know that you were going to go to Debert, Nova Scotia? Yeah. At the end of that eight weeks? Yeah, and I was going to be with Coastal Command. What is the Coastal Command? Describe that. That, that, um, primary responsibility is to protect the country from U boats, to sh shield. Convoys. Mm -hmm. we, we used to go up and uh, he'd establish contact with the leader of the convoy, and then you'd fly around the convoy and uh, the uh, the crew did. You did the, the, you did not know the crew before you met them? No. Had the crew previously trained together? In different... The, the air gunners had gone to air gunner school, the navigator bomber had gone to navigator bomber school. So they learned separately, and then they met with you in DeBert, Nova Scotia. Yeah. How long were you in DeBert, Nova Scotia for? Do you remember? About eight weeks. Eight weeks. And during those eight weeks, what's happening with you and the crew? What are you doing? We learned to fly together as a crew. What kind of plane are you flying in? Hudson, Lockheed Hudson. As a crew. It's a Lockheed Hudson. That's what it's called. It's a Lockheed Hudson. Is the, is the bo it's a bomber, correct? It's a light bomber, yeah. Lockheed. What, what is it meant by a light bomber? Well, it's different from a heavy bomb. Is a heavy bomber? Is it? Does it carry a lighter load? Does it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Light bomber. Had you ever been on a Lockheed Hudson before? No. What's the experience like to fly, uh, to go from a training aircraft into a Lockheed Hudson? What does that feel like the first time? You're yeah, flying a pretty big plane, and much more complicated. Complicated. Um, how how make what makes it complicated the first time you're in that plane? What are you thinking about when it, it makes it complicated? Well, you got a, an automatic pilot. That's brand new experience, and um, it's a bigger plane. Right. Bigger, bigger plane, more instruments to More watch. instruments, okay. Automatic pilot. Now, and describe the crew for me. What, what, how, for a full crew on a Lockheed Hudson, what does it consist of? Well, I'm the pilot in charge of the whole thing. My navigator was also a bomb aimer. We carried depth charges and, um, then my two air gunners were trained in operating the gun turret. Okay. And uh, um, operating the radio receiver and transmitter. And also um, the radar set. We had a radar. Now, you're, during the eight weeks, how many times a day do you go up in the in the Lockheed Hudson? 
Maybe once a day. <clears throat> What's going on during the rest of the day? Ground, ground crew. Ground crew? What does that mean? Lectures. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the lectures in? Tell me about what they are. Do you remember? Advanced navigation. Ship recognition. That type of thing. Would that be also like to des describe friendly or to be able to discern friend versus foe on the ships? And, and, and to be able to identify all the ships and all the navies in all the world. How do they test you for that? Same way they test you for aircraft recognition. No. They uh, flash a picture and you've got to identify it. At this point, had you done any formation flying? I'd done a little at, at uh, Saskatoon, yeah, with the Cessna. With the Cessna. And so you learned a little bit with the Cessna. And, and what's that experience like the first time you do it? I liked formation flying. I enjoyed it. It was exciting and... Working together with the other... Mm-hmm. Well, when, when you're now on this Lockheed Hudson, is there any formation flying going on with the Lockheed Hudsons at uh, Prince Edward Island there? Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Well, well, I mean at the Burt, Nova Scotia? No, we weren't interested in... Formation flying at that no, point, no. nothing of that. Now, what happens at the end of that eight weeks? Then, then you're shipped out to an operational squadron. Do you remember what time of year this was in 1940, it's about 1942, right? Probably late spring, early summer, 42? Could, could be, yeah. Right around there. So, uh, what's the operational squadron that you, you were assigned to, do you remember? Well, I, was, I went back to England on the Queen Elizabeth. Did your whole crew go back to, to England on the Queen Elizabeth? Did you... Did you stay together as a crew on the ship? No, because I'm an officer and they were non-commissioned officers. Right. Okay. Were you the only officer on your, on your plane? You were the man in charge? Yeah. Right. Uh, back, so it's back to England on the, Q, on the Queen Elizabeth. I almost said the QE2. Back to England on the Queen Elizabeth. And then where did you, uh, where did you leave from? Halifax, Nova Scotia. Ha Halifax, Nova Scotia. And how many people were on the Queen Elizabeth when you went back to England? Do you remember? Maybe 18,000, something like that. Were they all troops? A lot of American troops, yes. So with American troops too. American troops as well. And how long did it take you to cross the Atlantic? Do you remember? Five days, maybe. And was the trip uh, uneventful? Yeah. Did you also zig and zag like you did when you came over? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Were your accommodations better, worse, or about the same as they about, were on the Queen the Mary? About They're the about same. the same? And where did the ship dock when it got back to England? Good rock. I think that was where you left originally, right? Yeah. That's Scotland? Yeah. What did you do when you got to Scotland? I was posted to some place, mm -hmm. and then, then I was sent out to Ireland. Sent to Ireland. Now, between the time you got to Scotland and then the time you were shipped to Ireland, how long was that? Don't remember. Not too long. Not too long. Is your whole crew going to go with you to Ireland? No, they didn't. Okay. Why not? I don't know. What was your responsibility to be in Ireland? I was on this RAF base at Long Cash, and um, incidentally, that after the war, that was a concentration camp for the IRA. I've I've heard of it. So it's an RAF base in Long Cash, and you're you're um, you're going to, you're assigned there. And um, how did you get there from Scotland to the RAF base in Ireland? 
I think we flew. Okay. And this is 1942, and what's going to happen, what happens at Long Cash? What are you doing? Just practice flying circuits and bumps. Practice flying. What are you flying in? Lockheed Hudson. So you're continuing to, to continue your sharpness, right? Yeah. And your crew's not with you at the time? Are you flying by yourself in the Lockheed Hudson? Yeah. Just but you can't fly a Hudson alone so that a sign somebody might be a member of the ground crew. Tell me, why, why can't you fly it alone? Because you can't do all the emergency procedures. Mm -hmm. um, uh huh. You gotta if some if you lose. Uh, you gotta have somebody to hand pump the undercarriage down. That, uh huh. That type of thing. So you're you're practice flying and you're back. You're in in Long Cash. And how how long are you going to spend at Long Cash? About two or three weeks. Two to three weeks, and and you're you're there on your own, not with your flight crew. Yeah. Right. And where where do you wind up um, going next at the end of that two to three weeks? I went to Sidmouth in Devonshire. Could you spell Sidmouth for me? S I D M O U T H. Sidmouth, Devonshire. And where where is that in England? Southwest England. And why were you sent there? Oh, I had to do a commando course there. What? What? Uh, why? Why were you assigned to take a commando course? I spoke to toughen you up. Were all pilots assigned to take a commando course? I don't know. I was. What did that commando course consist of? Um. Well, all the usual things, um, we would have to do all this crazy stuff, uh, you know, climbing over obstacles from one thing to another. And uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, the, the command, how long did the commando course take? About ten days. Just a ten day course. And was it were you in there with other pilots? Yeah. And and, and uh what were your living arrangements like during that? I think we were in an old hotel. Was it a drastic shock from being uh uh a pilot and taking flying lessons and classes to doing commando training? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. What time do you have to get up in the morning? Six o'clock, I think. Okay. Did they put you through a lot of different things during those ten days? A lot of physical stuff. Physical yeah. training. I think that was in case they got shot down behind enemy lines. Oh, was that designed like, to help like, them with like, that? It's like the current. It's like, 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 like SEER training. Like I went to Army flight school. We had to take a two-week SEER course. Okay. In case survive, escape, resist, and um, it's evade. So it's kind of like a down to your crew course, essentially is what it is. Because if they get shot down, they have to make their way back. So it's teaching you all, all evasion techniques and how to, how, to, uh, how to protect yourself, that kind of thing? I guess so, yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, we're, we're just finishing up talking about your commando course, and I wanted to take you back to the uh, flying of the Hudson. You were, you were talking about some of the difficulties associated with it, and tell, tell me about it. Well, I realized later that the RAF knew nothing about the Hudson. I've since got a hold of one of the instructional manuals on the Hudson, and the procedures for landing the Hudson are totally wrong. The RAF believed that all gentlemen three-pointed their planes on landing. That's why you get into trouble with the Hudson, because you try to three-point a Hudson, 
She start the ground loop. What's a ground loop? That, that's when it flips around. What did you have to do to correct that? How did you... Once it started, you couldn't stop it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it would just flip around and break off the undercarriage. The undercarriage would go up into the engine compartment and cause a leak there. And um, the plane would catch fire. So you learned to fly, learned to land it certainly differently. I always wheeled in the Hudson, kept the tail up in the air, and um, kept the stick all the way forward up against the instrument panel. And you could break, you could break a Hudson, use the brakes to correct any tendency to loop because um, Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. How'd you do it? I I read a book by Neville Duke called Test Pilot. Neville Duke f flew out to North Africa. He's a fighter pilot. And he uh, was on... Uh, what was the hell of that plane? Kitty Hawks. And the Kitty Hawk, first time he tried to do a three point landing at the Kitty Hawk, she gone looped and crashed. And he found out then from the other pilots on the squadron, you never, never three point a Kitty Hawk. You always do a wheel winding. The, uh, after your commando course, what happened? It was, uh, you were I went out. Oh, I went to Long uh, to Lineham. Okay, you want to spell that for me? L Y N E H A M. And I took a long range flying course there. Were you still were you still on your own without the crew? I had since and I was back with the crew. Now you're back with the crew. Where had the crew been for the previous? I don't know. Yeah. The long range long range flying and what what are you learning with long range flying? The, the range way to get maximum economy from the engines is to um, use. Maximum RPM. Uh, I, I'm going to get this wrong. Go ahead. You you use maximum RPM and uh, mm -hmm. minimum shield mixture. Mm -hmm. Minimum fuel. Use maximum boost and minimum RPM. That's it. Okay. You, uh, how long was that long range flying course? About, about th three weeks. Where, where did you fly to when you were learning to do the long range? We just flew around England. And about what time of year was that? Remember? Still 1942? About? Later 1942? After you were finished at, uh, at, at, at Lynham with the long range flying and your crew was together, what happened then? Then we were... We took our Hudson. Uh, I even remember the number of the plane. AM-816. AM-816. And I flew it down to Cornwall, to Port Reith in Cornwall. To Cornwall. Did you say Port, what was it called? Port Reith? Yeah, port. it's in Cornwall. Mm -hmm. Cornwall is a 
County. And yes. Uh, yeah. And um, we took off at about 11 o'clock one night for North Africa. Now, tell me, um, at this point, uh, when you were at Lydum and you were there for three weeks, did you stay in barracks? Where did you on stay? The ba on the base. On the base. They had, they had base quarters there? Did you, you personally stayed on the base? And then, when did you learn that you were to go to, to Cornwall in North Africa? How did that all come about? I think I think I, found, I don't remember when I found out I was going to. Did the RAF have a tendency to tell you where you were going to go at the last minute, or did you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, did you nobody really knew what was going to. Happen. You didn't get a lot of advance warning. Mm -hmm. Why was that? Give me. Why was that? Yeah. What? And why? What was the specific reason for that? I don't know. I don't know. I well, secrecy. Know. Loose lips sink ships. What? Loose lips sink ships. Yeah. The, the, uh, we're about 19, still late 1942? Still about late 1942, do you think? When you're getting ready to go to North Africa? We, we went out there just after Christmas. 1942. Just after Christmas, 1942? You... Okay. Because one member of the crew had some Christmas uh, pie, uh, cake, Christmas cake his family had sent him. We ate that. How long did it take? You actually flew the plane to North Africa, correct? Yeah. Did you fly by yourselves? Yeah. How long did it take you to fly for, to North Africa? Eight hours and twenty minutes. Where uh, and you departed from Cornwall. Yeah. And you and you arrived where? And uh, 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 the hell's that place? It's, it's on the west coast of Africa, um, ra near Rabat Sali. Um. R a b a t. Next word, S A L E. How, how high did you fly when you flew from Cornwall to North Africa? About how high were you flying? About 10,000 feet, just on top of clouds. Okay. And this is an, was it an overnight flight? Yeah. Did you fly at night for any specific reason? Yeah. The Germans had Junkers 88 patrolling the What the hell's that bay? We oh. had... Huh. What's, oh. that, what's that? What? On the north side of Spain, you mean? Or? Yeah. Not this... Um... We, we had to fly way out to, over the Atlantic to mm -hmm. miss them. They had to go out around Spain, actually, because Spain was a neutral country. But they would patrol them that one bay there, the Germans would patrol out just to try and intercept transports, that type of thing. Do you recall, at this time, uh, in this is a battle of North Africa, has, uh, have the Allies won over North Africa yet? Yes. At this point we controlled North Africa? Yeah, and Sicily. And Sicily, okay. So we've already, okay. And so, you're to arrive, you arrive in North Africa, after that eight hour, that, that flight, eight hour and 20 minute flight. And um, what happens next? Sure. I had to leak. Pilot. So there you go. That was, well, you had to relieve yourself there, huh? No relief to you. On that. That's something that you will, will always recall, right? I'll Getting there. About that. And then what happened, uh, what happened next? We, we spent the night at... Uh, Was it Satif? And was it Satif? C T I F. Okay. It's an airfield near Robert Sally. I spent the night there, and then the next day, flew out to um, 
an airfield in the Atlas Mountains. And uh, what was uh, the reason you had to fly to that airfield in the Atlas Mountains? It was a maintenance base. I had to leave the plane there for checking. How long were you there for? Just landed and get the hell out. We took the uh, blue train special from there to Algiers. <coughs> and. Uh, it was full of wogs. What uh, what happened when you got to Algiers? Was it in a French Foreign Legion barracks? And what what was going on in Algiers at the time? What were you? Why were you assigned there? Well. Uh, I don't know. They kept us there for two or three nights. And then I flew in an old C-47 to Italy. You, you flew in the C-47? You were transported to Italy? Correct. Transport we, Command, yeah. And was your crew transported with you? Yeah. Where did you land in Italy? Naples. Just, just outside Naples. Capuchino. At this point, again, are you told where you're going to be going when you get to Algiers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, why are you being transported to Naples, Italy? What's going on? Well, the Allies have just captured Naples. And uh, the squadron I was going to was at Monaco Vino in the Bay of Solano. And uh, what what is the squadron's assignment going to be? What is your assignment going to be when you get 608 there? Six oh eight squadron. Six oh eight squadron. And what are they what are they going to be doing? F flying Hudsons and uh, escorting convoys from. The Straits of Messina in Sicily up to Naples. What is uh, and and when you get to uh, when you get to Naples, what's going to happen? What happens next after you get settled in there? Where 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 are you quartered in Naples? Where uh, quartered the squadron at uh, Salerno. It's Salerno. And and what do you where do you live? What what are you living in? An old farm, Italian farmhouse. Farmhouse. And the crew. Uh huh. My when NCOs were in the uh, cow shed. Mm -hmm. That was their quarters, and uh, the the ground crew were in the um, what the hell. They were in some other farm building. What, uh, what, what are, describe your missions and what you're going to be doing there again. I know you talk about flying the Hudsons and escorting convoys. What, what happens next? That's enough. Escorting convoys mm -hmm. from Messina up to Naples. Mm -hmm. And um, that was it. What? what <coughs> The, the, describe the, the, the escorting the convoys and what your, your Hudsons are doing. We carried depth charges at night. If we saw a U-boat periscope, we'd depth charge it. But um, we also carried four rockets under each wing we use in the daytime. We didn't have any special procedure for aiming rockets. We had a reflector gun sight that was taken off a, a fighter plane, mm -hmm. and it, it gives you a circle with a dot in the middle. That's, that's your aiming point. And um, you have to aim the plane at a 
60, 60 degree angle. How, how do you calculate the 60 degree angle? Well, some genius figured that if you're flying along and your target passes under the nose of the plane, count three and then aim at the target. Did it work? You aim at the target using the reflector gun sight. Mm -hmm. Did it work? That, that was how you got a 60 degree dive. And you also described at night flying and, and looking for submarines as well, right? How, how could you spot them at night? How was that done? You couldn't. You, we had a, a radar set. And he could pick up, maybe if the submarine was surf close to the surface or had its periscope up, he could pick up the blip on the radar. Then, then we dive and we always flew at 2,000 feet mm. on anti-submarine patrols. And, um, If, if you're going to attack a submarine, you did so at 2,000 feet or less, and you used a conventional bomb site, just like you were bombing a regular target. Mm -hmm. So you flew out from your from um, Salerno. You flew out from Salerno. How many how many Hudsons would fly out at the same time to uh, to do this kind of with you? You're one at a time. One at a time. And how, how, how often were you doing this? Oh, about every other night. Every other night? And, and, and what's the night like? How, how many hours does this take, is, is the mission itself? Oh, you'd, you'd be up for three or four hours. Mm -hmm. And how would you get, you, you, you would know where the convoy would be, is it right? Because you're, you're protecting yes. your convoy. Yeah. So you're you're out there, and uh, and then you're patrolling the waters near the convoy. See, are, are the con do you see the convoy in sight all the time? Do you have them in, in sight? You pick them up on your radar. Mm -hmm. You have to be very careful when you circle the convoy that you don't get too close, or they'll open fire on you. Even though we've identified ourselves as being on the same side, and. Um, Because they were very trigger happy, those convoy boys. And um, so, something's going so I'm trying to recall something. You're flying around for the convoys. Do you, do you get a briefing at the beginning of your mission? <clears throat> oh, yeah. They, they brief you, right? And is it, just, is it just your crew that's briefed? Or do other crews in... We all get briefings when we're going to do a mission. Uh-huh. But, uh... You, you wouldn't go out with several planes. You could just go out one at a time. One at a time. How long was the convoy missions, how long did they, did they go for again? Three to four hours. Three to four hours. And how, how, over what period of time? Uh, weeks? Months? How, how long did that take? I think we're into 1943 now. Do you remember? Uh, how long did it take? Yeah, you're in Salerno, Italy, and you're doing the convoy work. How, how long, how, over how many weeks was that? How many, how long a time period? Do you remember? I, I, I forget how long. Um, we, we would periodically fly up to where they have the landings? Anzio. Anzio. He. Yeah. So, so you're flying up off of Anzio as well with with your crew. Yeah. And was that also single missions that you would fly? Yeah. And describe them for us. Well, you just fly up there until you got offshore off Anzio, and then you'd circle around. Also doing anti-submarine activity. Yeah. And what what did you see when you were up flying up over Anzio? Depended on the visibility available. 
uh, you could see a lot of gunfire and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one time when we had been up there, we came back and we ran into a German air raid over Naples. Now, how the hell we got into a German air raid over Naples, I, I don't know. My, my radar operator had been picking up, we had a beacon at, at our airfield at Solano. And he picked that up and he, he took us in on the, the heading given him by the beacon. Mm. And um, we suddenly found ourselves in the middle of all hell. You know, if you want something really exciting, you go into a situation where both sides fire on you at the same time. <laughs> and uh, I found out a year or two after the war, I went up to Montreal where, where the weak phrase of that radar, radar operator lived. And uh, he invited me out to his apartment to meet his wife and we got drunk and had steaks. And then he, he confessed, he said, you know, that night we flew into that air raid over Naples. I said, how the hell can I forget it? He said, it was my fault. I misread the signal. You got out okay. We got out okay. It's, it's, it's a scary it's moment. Yeah. Now, when you're talking about, you're still in Salerno and you're flown up to, to Anzio. I'm sorry, were you doing the Anzio run from Salerno to Anzio? Or you stayed right? Salerno to Anzio? Yeah. Okay. How? What happens next after you're, you're flying your flights up to Anzio? What happens next? Well, you keep on doing those things. Okay. Where, uh, during the time frame there, uh, continue more. What else, what else happened after Anzio? You're still in Italy. Oh, then they disbanded 608 Squadron. Okay. God knows why. And, uh, yeah, I can do it real quick here. They didn't just take the alcohol, they took the and they, they, we, we had this marvelous great bar with a back to it. Uh -huh. And um, that was borrowed or so stolen from an Italian hotel in Algiers. And um, the guys brought it ashore on a landing ship. The, Landed with the. Mm -hmm. oh. in, in the landers. When they landed at uh, the Solano landing, that was before I joined the squadron. They also had an old car, a French car, a Delage, that was stolen from a showroom in Algiers. And that was known as the commanding officer's passion wagon. <laughs> if you had a date with a good looking young gal, you and you could persuade the commanding officer to loan you the car for the evening. That was why it was known as the CS passion car. And this is still why you're with the 608th, 608th Squadron? What? This is why you were with the 608th Squadron there? Yeah. Okay. And that's all before it disbanded? Before they dis disbanded it? Okay. Okay, so you're wrapping up then with the 600, the 608th, you, uh, this, it disbands, and then, then what happens? Where, where are you assigned? To, six, uh, to 25 South African Air Force Squadron. Okay, and what? Who are they? <coughs> Why are they called the Twenty Five South African Squadron? That's the number of their squadron. Okay, and they were part of the Air Force Squadron. And what's their responsibility? Bombing. Where are they going to be bombing? Italy. 
we were part of the Balkan Air Force and uh, we were going to bomb Yugoslavia, Greece, Albania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I see you switched to Venturos, new airplane. So, you're going to switch from flying the Hudsons to a new airplane? What's the airplane again? The Lockheed Ventura. So it's still Lockheed Ventura. Oh, also known in the U.S. Navy as a PV-1. Is it the same, is it with your same crew? Yeah. Did you have to, did you have to do a lot of much training to get used to flying no. that? No. Similar kind of plane? Yeah. And, uh, and you're going to do bombing runs. And are you going to be training in, uh, are you going to be flying in formation? Daylight formation. Did you have to learn how to fly in formation more? No, I already knew how to. We just need a little practice. There's a little practice. And you're going to go up, can, uh, we'll, we'll get into this in the next tape when we finish this up. But describe, as, you, as you're going to start doing bombing runs, you're going to fly in formation. You, you, you've got a lead pilot, right? Hey, hey, what's your role in that? Where, where do you fit in the formation in your plane? Where are you? Where I was assigned. Mm -hmm. I might, might be number two to the leader, mm -hmm. or I might be number three over on the port side, or I might fly below. Mm -hmm. we, we would have a formation of 12 planes. 12 planes? Yeah. And you're going to do daylight bombing? Yeah. And you're gonna you're gonna bomb in the Balkans. Mm -hmm. You're gonna fly out of Italy. You're gonna fly out of right there in Salerno. Yeah. No. We were over on the Adriatic side. Uh huh. And uh, what was the name of the city or the area that you were assigned at? I can't remember the name of the airfield. But How did you get there from Salerno? Do you remember? Flew there. You flew up there, and then uh, where where did they have you stay in this at this base? Tent, tent, tents. And uh, and was you and the same crew that you had worked with before? And do you have a certain number of missions you have to fly in order to to uh, to to no longer be participating in bombing runs? Do you know? Do you have a certain number of flight time or missions? No. No. Mm -hmm. They didn't use time. No rotation like the U.S. Okay, no rotation. They didn't have that much manpower.